Good evening. Bless you. Welcome to this Sunday night, March the 18th, 1984, here at the Way International Headquarters. It's good to have you all here with us this evening. Dr. Werbel is here, and he's going to be teaching God's Word a little later on. Heavenly Father, I surely thank you for the wonderful privilege of knowing that you truly care for your people. And I thank you for the privilege of allowing me to care for your people and help to bless them with your word and with your love. Thank you for this wonderful day that we can be together here in this wonderful night. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Sometimes when I see your face It means so much to me and There's times when I touch your hand it Gives me the strength that I need Let's hold on tight to each other One great thing we have is one another Let's take care of each other with God's love in our hearts. Keep the fire burning here at home. Keep singing those love songs. We're going to keep each other warm. Keep the fire burning, our hearts open wide. We trust each other to be so close, to share what we feel inside. Let's hold on tight to each other. One great thing we have is one another. Let's take care of each other. God's love in our hearts. Keep the fire burning here at home. Keep singing those love songs. We're going to keep each other warm. Keep the fire burning. Share 
sharing it will help someone else learn to live. Make the word your own. Then give your all. Don't hold any good thing back from the ones you love. Make it your own. Then give your heart. Don't hold any good thing back from the ones you love. Tonight I thought I'd like to share a little of my heart on the subject of God's will in the fast lane. There is so much to study in the Word and to teach and to learn on the subject that we are dealing with here at International on burning the chaff and God's will in the fast lane that 
no one like myself or anyone else can teach it to you in a half hour, an hour. It's just a way of life. You learn to live it. You learn to understand it as you stay faithful to God and his word and stay put in the household that makes it available. The greatest basic truth I know regarding God's will for the fa living in the fast lane, and that is, if you want to travel fast and far, you've got to travel light. You cannot be burdened down if you're going to travel fast and if you're going to travel far. You've got to travel right, light. And in order to do that, you have to get rid of the extra ballast in your life. That which is weighing you down, holding you back from being the best that you really could be and the best that you really want to be when you really are spiritually sober and you think about it. Most of the ballast that we carry with unnecessary ballast that we carry, we carry in our minds. Like fear or worry or anxiety. And another one of the great ballasts we carry in our mind is condemnation. Some people carry a condemnation that they're not as good as somebody thinks they ought to be, or they're not as beautiful as somebody thinks they could be, or they carry the condemnation of not living up to society's pressure group to have and to manifest what the so-called Joneses have in the environment, which means in your immediate house, apartment, the place where you live, the office or the business place you have. I think it's in the foundational class where I tell our people if you'll put aside all of that reading material you have in the house and everything and just spend three months every time you have an opportunity reading the scriptures, you won't know yourself in three months. You, d you develop so much. I have learned also through the years that one of the ballasts in life and that need that holds people back is they got too many magazines in the house. They buy too many. Somebody comes along and sells you a bill of goods, so you buy another magazine. And then it goes on the shelf. Then you occasionally you have an opportunity to read it. Most of the time, it's just shelved. And then you, you've spent the money which you could have used for something else. There is a law in life that everything with which you surround yourself will affect you. The type of pictures you have in your living room, in your bedroom, in your bathroom, in the kitchen, are going to affect you. The type of reading material you keep in the house, the kind of records, the kind of tapes, because everything gives off something like this desk that I'm sitting at tonight teaching you from. Looks like it's solid, but it isn't. The only difference is it may be a little more solid than this leaf on this plant, but the molecules are all roaming around all over the place. So it's the atoms or molecules, I don't know what it is, but it's giving off. Therefore, every picture you have in the room is giving off something. Every book you have out there in the open is giving off something. And that is going to affect you. So the thing you have to do if you want to travel fast and far 
in God's will in the fast lane, you just got to burn that junk. You got to get rid of it. Get it out of the place where it has the effect of producing a result in your life. The first category I told you was in the mind. Secondly, in the environment. The third thing I'd like to say that I've found is in communication. Misunderstanding is easy to come by because we just do not communicate clear enough or lovingly enough or with enough understanding. Everyone knows that in the Olympics, not in the United States, but in the old original Olympics, the Greek Olympics, all the runners would run naked because they didn't want anything to hold them back. And that's why in the old Olympics, they, they all ran naked because they wanted to travel fast, they wanted to travel far, so they had to travel light. Now the ballast in your life can be burned like chaff. You can get rid of it. But the first thing you have to do to get rid of any ballast in your life is make up your mind. Do you really want to get rid of it? Do you really think it's holding you back? If you really think it is, then you've got to make up your mind to get rid of it. And the way you do that is stated in Romans, please. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Everybody got it? Be not what? Conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? the renewing of your mind. To get rid of the ballast, you have to renew your mind, transformed by the renewing of your mind. And if you do that, you're able to prove what is that good and acceptable and what? Perfect will of what? God. See, that's God's will for the fast lane. Now we can all go home if we want to do. That's all to do with the truth. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you're able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look at Ephesians. Chapter 4. Verse 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to what? Deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your what? Or in the life of your mind. That's where the renewing is. All of our opportunities for the most part are right up above the shoulders, in between the ears, the renewing of the mind. We hold on to ballast in our life. We hold on to chaff in our life because we do not want to renew our minds and get rid of it. Oh, we say we don't like it, but then instead of getting rid of it, we keep doing it anyway. It's okay. Philippians. Chapter 2. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in whom? See, that's God's will in the fast lane. Let the mind be in my mind. Let the mind be in you which is also in whom? And that means putting on the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in my mind that was the same mind as was in Christ Jesus. And since Jesus Christ is our example and we are in Christ Jesus, 
we have to constantly keep working in our life to get rid of the baloney, the ballast, the chaff. This is not a one-time affair. It's not a one-day-a-year affair. The burning of the things here at headquarters today was not as much as last year. I appreciated that. Next year, I hope it's less burning, which tells me that the people are burning it all year long as they see things in their homes, in their life, in their environment, in their thinking, they're getting rid of it. They don't save the whole thing for March the 18th or something. Look at First Peter chapter 1. Verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your what? Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation or of the, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You see, one of the reasons you want to live in God's fast lane, people, is not only for the deliverance it brings you now and the kind of joy and blessing and happiness you have in your life in the now, but because of the treasures that are laid up in the future with the appearing of the revelation of Jesus Christ with the return. Did you see the word hope in there? See? With the return of Christ. Because there's a lot more to life than just this time that we're living now. Because with the return of Christ, with the appearing of Christ, we are going to be rewarded throughout all eternity for our stand and what we did for him in this life. So if you want to lay up anything that's worth anything for the future, You've got to go into God's will for his fast lane. You've got to get rid of the ballast in your life, the chaff, and you just have to manifest that life which is more than abundant. So you've got to make up your mind, which is the renewed mind. Psalm 103, please. Another category that I have learned to get rid of and everybody has to if you want to travel fast and far and you want to travel light, you've got to learn to forgive. In Psalm 103, in verse 12, it says, as far as the east is from what? So far hath he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath God removed our transgressions from us. If God, our sin, if God can remove it, if he can forgive it, for me then what difficulty do I have in forgiving someone else? In Hebrews. Chapter 8, please. Verse 12, the scripture says, For I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness, God says, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no what more. Right. Look at chapter 10 of Hebrews. And their sins and iniquities will I remember what? No more. See? Cast from us as far as the east as, as is from the west, and God will remember them no more. What? In First John, I think it is, it says, if we confess our broken fellowship, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Then why do people consistently continue to allow themselves to live under condemnation? Because if God has forgiven our transgressions from us for as far as the east is from the west, and if he will not remember them anymore, then why do you want to remember them? Why do you allow any human being to bring them up again to remind you of them? Look at Ephesians. Chapter 4, verse 19. Well, verse 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby or by whom you're sealed, how long? Unto the day of what? That's the return of Christ. Sealed until the day of redemption. That's why all bitterness in verse 31, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, that's all ballast has to be put away from you with all what? Malice. Verse 32. And be ye kind one to another. Tender what? And forgiving one another. Why? Even as God, for Christ's sake, has what? That's right, has forgiven you. Look at Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness is two, humbleness is three, humbleness of mind, three, meekness, four, long-suffering, five, thirteen, Forbearing, number six, forbearing one another. And number seven, what? Forgiving one another. So if you want to travel fast and far, you've got to travel light and you've got to forgive. Whenever a Christian, if a Christian ever says that there's someone he cannot forgive, there's something wrong with that Christian. Because all you have to ever remember, if you're a real believer, is what God forgave you for and how gracious God has been to you and how loving, then you will not have any opportunity of forgiving another brother or sister. So whenever you hear someone say, well, they can't forgive so-and-so, you know good and well they don't really know God or God's forgiveness, or they could See, all you have to remember is how loving God was to you, what he forgave you for, then you won't have any trouble forgiving anybody else. 1 Corinthians, please. Chapter 2. Verse 16. For who hath known the mind of what? that he may instruct him. Question. But we have the mind of Christ. Nobody's going to instruct God or instruct his son, Jesus Christ. Nobody's going to teach him. But we have the mind of Christ made available to us through his word. We know his will but have the mind of Christ. And boy, when you work the Gospels and you see the mind of Christ, his love, his understanding, his forgiveness, and yet the quality of steel in his life, like when he met with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he was much different when he met with those fellows born of the wrong seed than he was 
when he met with the woman who was taken in adultery. So the ballast in life, the chaff in everybody's life, can be handled if we make up our mind to handle it and if we are forgiving and loving. In Luke chapter 3, told you this in the foundational class. It is also in the Holy Spirit book, receiving whatever the name of that book is. And it's uh, along this scripture of 3.16 that I want to share with you from Luke tonight. John answered, saying unto them, it's John the Baptist, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, people. The latchet, or laces of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, panumahagion, and fire. Now, this is a figure saying that this Holy Spirit with which he was going to baptize had the ability to burn up any of the chaff in your life. That's why it's the Holy Spirit and fire. Look in the next verse. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he'll burn with fire unquenchable. I believe that in our ministry, way ministry, our people frequently have just never realized the great potential within them of burning up the chaff in their life, getting rid of the ballast with the power of the Holy Spirit within them. We've really never majored this. But it's a God-given gift. It's Christ in you, right? And therefore, you're baptized with his presence. You have the power within you that when you make up your mind, you can burn up all the chaff and get rid of the ballast. It all depends on whether you want to or whether you don't. You've got the power. Second Corinthians, please. Second Corinthians, bless your heart, chapter 10. Verse 5, casting down imaginations. The word imaginations is reasonings. And every high thing, the word high is false thing, that exalteth itself against the knowledge of what? Now look at the rest of that. And bringing into what? every thought to the obedience of what? Right. Because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we're born again, we're able to bring into captivity every thought, and we're able to do this to the obedience of Christ so that we burn the chaff, we get rid of the ballast, and we control our thinking and bring everything into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, if you control your mind, you can control your life. But if you let your mind run rampant, you'll never control your life. Circumstances will control that or your life or somebody else will. You won't. But you have freedom of will, people, and you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, which is the Holy Spirit in Christ in you, that will burn up the chaff and give you the strength to get rid of the ballast in your life, to burn up the chaff, and to be more than a conqueror and to have a life which is more than abundant. In Mark chapter 4.
This is what I desire to close with tonight, bless your heart. The world and people who are not truly Christian believers with renewed minds will always try to pull you down. They'll always try to want you to stay lower than God wants you. You just got to make up your mind whether you want to move on what God wants you to be according to his revelation or whether you're going to let your neighbor or your best friend or someone else pull you down to the world's level. That's why I said you got to make up your mind and you got to be forgiving. And you got to control your thinking. You cannot allow other people to determine what you're going to think. You cannot let them control your thinking. You got to determine in your own mind what you're going to do, the way you're going to think. And it's just as easy to think positive as it is to think negative. But the proportions are a little outlined for one person telling you to think positive. A hundred people most likely surround you to try to get you to think negatively. And yet if there are a hundred it doesn't make any difference. It's not in numbers. It's in what you think and what you believe. That's why you make up your own mind what you're going to think and how you're going to act. The final thing that you have to control is written in Mark chapter 4. Where this parable is given about the sower and the seed that was sowed. Verse 16. sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately received it with gladness. Verse 17. But have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. They flip out. Verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares, cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes what? Unfruitful. See? Cares of the, this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. I think most people think that if they just had riches, plenty of money and so forth, they'd be happy as crazy. Well, the last word is true. They'd most likely be crazy. <laughs> most people are possessed by the material things that possess them. Now, it's wonderful to have material things if you use them properly. But most people, if they got a carload of money tonight, you couldn't stand them tomorrow. See? It's that deceitfulness of riches. And frequently you hear people always talking about, you know, making more money and doing this and doing that. There are certain needs you have, but just making more money for money's sake, is deceitful. 
if you've got a purpose in making it where it can really be used and be a blessing, it can be a blessing to you. If not, you'll happen exactly what it says here. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, choke the what? Word. Choke the word out and it becomes and you become unfruitful. So it is God's will as we live in the fast lane of life for him that we just do not allow the deceitfulness of riches or the cares of this world to trick us, to choke the word and make us unfruitful. Now we all need food, clothing, shelter, that kind of stuff. God knows that. But when you begin to get more than you really need, that's where your problem begins. Then it'll start choking the word. But of course, you'll come up with all kind of excuses of saying it isn't done, but it is. The word says it does it. So that settles it. No excuse carries any validity. And it will choke out the word, and then you will become unfruitful in your life just the opposite of what you really want to be. The only way I've ever seen this avoided in people's lives is if they put God first and then if they have these material things coming in that, that they're not deceived by the riches that they share abundantly. And you're not sharing abundantly if you only give one-tenth of the income. You're not sharing abundantly. Because the Jews, they gave that under law. We don't live under law. We live under grace. Therefore, we certainly, sharing abundantly, would not do as little as that if we were sharing abundantly. And if you have an abundance coming in, if God is first, that abundance will really be a blessing to your life and the lives of others, and God will keep multiplying it back to you. See, if you have a worker working for you whom you can trust, you don't mind giving that worker more responsibility, do you? More opportunities? Likewise with God, if he's got believers whom he can trust with material things, he doesn't mind giving them more material things. So these are some of the things, people, that I felt I just wanted to share with you tonight because this whole subject of burning the chaff or getting rid of the ballast in your life is a constant day-by-day -day walk. I don't know if any of us ever get rid of all of it. But if we don't start, we're never going to get rid of any of it. So you start cleaning up your mind, your life, and your environment. So you just have to make up your mind, be loving and forgiving of others, and control your thinking. Okay?